You're listening to Witham's Taxing Topics. When it rains, it pours. Tax regulations and guidance are dynamic, continually changing domestic and international financial waters. Step under Witham's umbrella to better weather the storms of tending taxing topics. We'll share the essential news and information you need to prepare for what's ahead. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our, today's podcast about Rev Crop 2022-32, updating the simplified method for the portability election. My name is Rebecca Alisea, and I'm a principal in the PCS practice specializing in high net worth individuals, gifts, trusts, and estates. With me today discussing this update is Maria Carvalho. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm Maria Carvalho, and I am a tax supervisor, also in the PCS niche, specializing in high net worth individuals, gifts, trusts, and estates. As a result of the IRS updating the simplified method, the surviving spouse of a decedent's estate now have a longer period of time of up to five years to request an extension. We will tell you how exactly this came to be, what legislation was in place before, and what exactly is a portability election. Yes, let's break down the timeline of prior legislation and let's explain what a portability election is. So a portability election allows for the executor to transfer the decedent's unused exclusion amount, also known as their dissue amount, to the surviving spouse. The surviving spouse may then utilize this dissue amount for any federal, estate, or gift tax purposes during their life or at death. The portability election is only applicable after December 31st, 2010. So Rebecca, wasn't the portability election only supposed to be a temporary provision? However, because of the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012, portability is now permanent? That's correct, Maria. It was originally supposed to expire on January 1st, 2013, but has now become permanent. So in order for the surviving spouse to make the portability election, a 706 for the decedent spouse must be filed timely. Even if a 706 would not have originally been required for the decedent's estate. Taking us back to June, 2017, the IRS established an extension of time to make a portability election for decedents who had no filing requirements to file an estate tax return. It was during this time period that the original simplified method was established. The surviving spouse now had the ability to make an extension up to two years of the decedent's date of death, or if there was an election made past the two years, a letter may be written to request a letter ruling. And as a result of the private letter ruling request, the IRS had a large influx, and this resulted in a significant burden on their resources. The large influx of private letter rulings encouraged the IRS to proceed with publishing the new simplified method on July 8, 2022. The surviving spouse can now make a portability election up to five years of the decedent's date of death, which is used in place of writing a letter. Now, Maria, what would happen if there's a private letter ruling already in process? That's a great question, Rebecca. So any pending letter ruling seeking an extension of time to make a portability election up to July 8, 2022, will be closed by the Office of the Associate Chief Counsel of Pastors and Special Industries, and they will refund the amount paid for the user fee. So it sounds like now is the time for a deceased spouse and their executor to determine if they are eligible for this extended five-year election period. Please reach out to your Witham tax professional if you have any questions regarding the updates to the simplified method. You've been listening to Witham's Tax and Topics. Contact us with your feedback or suggestions for future podcast topics. Visit www.witham.com for additional information. Send an email to info at Witham.com or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at Witham CPA. Thank you for listening.